According to legend, the goddess Chang'e and her husband Ho Yi were immortals living in heaven. One day, the ten sons of the Jade Emperor transformed into ten suns, causing the earth to become scorching hot. Having failed to order his sons to stop ruining the earth, the Jade Emperor summoned Ho Yi for help. Ho Yi, using his legendary archery skills, shot down nine of the sons, but spared one son to be the main son for earth. The Jade Emperor was obviously not pleased with Ho Yi's solution to save the earth, since nine of his sons are now dead. As punishment, the Jade Emperor banished Ho Yi and Chang'e to live as mere mortals on earth. Seeing that Chang'e felt extremely miserable over her loss of immortality, Ho Yi decided to journey on a long, perilous quest to find the Pale of Immortality, so that the couple could be immortals again. At the end of his quest, he met the Queen Mother of the West, who agreed to give him the pill, but warned him that each person would only need half of the pill to become immortal. Ho Yi brought the pill home and stored it in a case. He warned Chang'e not to open the case, and then left home for a while. Chang'e, much like Pandora in the Greek mythologies, became too curious. She opened up the case and found the pill just as Ho Yi was returning home. Nervous that Ho Yi would catch her discovering the contents of the case, she accidentally swallowed the entire pill. She started to float into the sky because of the overdose. Although Ho Yi wanted to shoot her in order to prevent her from floating further, he could not bear to aim an arrow at her. Chang E kept on floating until she landed on the moon. While she became lonely without her husband, she did have company. A jade rabbit who manufactured elixirs also lived on the moon. The jade rabbit is on the moon because he offered himself as food for the jade emperor when he lived on earth, and the jade emperor was so moved he allowed the deceased rabbit to live on the moon as an immortal jade rabbit. Another companion is the woodcutter, Wu Gang. The woodcutter offended the gods in his attempt to achieve immortality and was therefore banished to the moon. Wu Gang was allowed to leave the moon if he could cut down a tree that grew there. The problem was that each time he chopped on the tree, the tree would instantly grow back, effectively condemning him to live on the moon for eternity. Chang E was a beautiful young girl working in the Jade Emperor's palace in heaven, where immortals, good people, and fairies lived. One day, she accidentally broke a precious porcelain jar. Angered, the Jade Emperor banished her to live on earth. He told her she could return to heaven if she contributed a valuable service on earth. Chang E was transformed into a member of a poor farming family. When she was 18, a young hunter named Ho Yi from another village spotted her, now a beautiful young woman. They became friends. One day, a strange phenomenon occurred. Ten suns arose in the sky instead of one, blazing the earth. Ho Yi, an expert archer, stepped forward to try to save the earth. He successfully shot down nine of the ten sons, becoming an instant hero. He eventually became king and married Chang E. But Ho Yi grew to become greedy and selfish. He sought immortality by ordering an elixir to be created to prolong his life. The elixir, in the form of a single pill, was almost ready when Chang E came upon it. She either accidentally or purposefully swallowed the pill. This angered King Ho Yi, who went after his wife. In contrast to the first version, her companion, a rabbit, does not create the elixir of life. Aside from the rabbit, the moon is also inhabited by a woodcutter who tries to cut down the cassia tree, giver of life. But as fast as he cuts into the tree, it heals itself, and he never makes any progress. The Chinese use this image of the cassia tree to explain mortal life on earth. The limbs are constantly being cut away by death, but new buds continually appear. Meanwhile, King Ho Yi ascended to the sun and built a palace. So Chang E and Ho Yi came to represent the yin and yang, the moon and the sun. Chang E was a human in the mortal world. She was a palace maid. Suddenly, ten suns appeared in the sky and the earth became very hot. The king looked for a person with accurate archery skills to shoot down nine of the suns. A commoner called Ho Yi saw that the situation was getting bad. He took out his bow and arrow and shot down the nine sons with nine arrows. The king was pleased and wanted to reward him. Ho Yi was in love with Chang E and wanted to marry her. The king gave her to him as a reward. The two lived happily until one day, a mysterious old man came and gave Ho Yi an elixir that could make him live forever. Ho Yi hesitated whether to take the pill. He was unsure and left the pill under his pillow on the bed. Chang E found the pill. She did not know what it was and just swallowed it, because apparently that's just what you do. Chang E became immortal and flew to the moon. Ho Yi was devastated, and while he lived, he would make Chang E moon cakes and present them to the moon every night until he died. People now use lanterns to light up the earth so that Chang E can see them from the moon. 
In one retelling of the story of Chang'e and the elixir of immortality, Chang'e's decision to consume the elixir is not caused by selfishness or spite. Instead, it is caused by fear of Ho Yi's apprentice, Feng Men, who attempts to steal the elixir from Chang'e. She consumes the elixir in order to escape him before the elixir can fall into Feng Men's hands. She descended on the 15th of August, and this is why the Chinese celebrate the Mid-Autumn Festival on that day. Another tale tells of an abusive Ho Yi, and that Chang'e drank the elixir to escape his abuse. And another tells of a selfish Chang'e, who decides to betray her husband, and after taking the elixir and winding up on the moon, she is turned into a hideous toad by the Queen Mother of the West, as punishment for her betrayal, forever doomed to live out a lonely and repulsive existence on the moon. Chang'e is mentioned in a book titled Journey to the West, written by Wu Chang'in. Here it is explained that the greedy Zhu Bahi, while as commander of 80,000 heavenly warriors, got drunk at a party. Chang'e was seen by Zhu Bahi, who was captivated by the beauty of this goddess and tried to make advances on Chang'e. These advances failed, and Chang'e reported Zhu Bahi's behavior to the Jade Emperor, and it is said that since then, Chang'e has been reluctant to go to heaven. In the animated series, Avatar The Last Airbender, Season 1, Episode 18, we are introduced to a girl named Yue, and later learn that she is the princess of the Northern Water Tribe. She takes a liking to Sokka, but cannot pursue a relationship with him since she is already engaged to someone else. But before the marriage could happen, the Northern Water Tribe is attacked by Fire Nation battleships, and Princess Yue takes Aang to the Spirit Oasis in hopes that the spirits there can give him advice to help defeat the invaders. Aang looks into the oasis and notices how similar the two koi fish are to yin and yang. Later, after they've left the oasis, Fire Nation General Zhao comes upon the oasis and steals the white koi fish, causing Princess Yue to feel the effects of the blood red moon. And we learn that Yue has a deep connection to the moon spirit since when she was born, she was not expected to live, but the moon spirit decided to give her life, which made her hair white as a result and her parents named her Yue for the moon. When General Zhao kills the white koi fish, everything turns dark and becomes unbalanced. In an effort to save it, Princess Yue sacrifices her life to restore the moon to the world. This is where we finally see the parallel to the Chinese tale, with Sokka taking the place of Ho Yi and Yue the place of Chang'e. She is forced to leave him behind forever and is bound to the moon. And just like Ho Yi, Sokka stares at the moon saddened by what has happened. And finally, onto the newly released Netflix film, Over the Moon. This film is directed by Glenn Keane, the man responsible for having designed characters for these movies, and many more. This is the second film produced by Pearl Studio, after DreamWorks' 2019 animated film, Abominable. The movie starts off with a tale of why the moon has phases. A lunar dog eats it bit by bit until there is no more, and when that happens, the moon goddess Chang'e makes him spit it out whole again. This leads to the main character, Fei Fei, to ask her mother to tell her the story of Chang'e and Ho Yi, where she uses her scarf to help illustrate it. The tale goes that they were in love and that Ho Yi was given the pills of immortality and while he was away, a robber entered their home hoping to steal them and Chang E put both pills in her mouth to try and hide them, causing her to begin floating away and she ends up on the moon and her tears end up making new stars. After the tale, we see that Fei Fei's parents run a mooncake shop. Everything is fine until a few years later when her mother suddenly becomes sick. Her final gift to Fei Fei is a white rabbit whom she names Bungie. Her mother passes away soon after, and the movie cuts to four years after it happens, with Fei Fei now being 14 and no longer having long hair like she did when she was younger. She is eventually introduced to a new friend of her father's named Mrs. Zhang, who Fei Fei quickly realizes is more than just her father's friend. She then meets her 8-year-old son named Chin, whom she takes an instant disliking to and isn't too fond of his pet frog either. After becoming upset during her family dinner, Fei Fei starts thinking of ways to build a rocket to meet Chang'e. She makes it to the moon with a stowaway chin, and they are taken by some mooncake servants to see Chang'e, who introduces herself via a song called Ultra Luminary. Here's a part of the song. It was a desert on the moon when we arrived, gathering all of my tears, heartbreak, Fei Fei realizes she is nothing like the stories her mother told her and is tasked to bring the gift to Chang'e if she wants to be given the picture of them together as proof to her father of her existence. During this time, Chin ends up playing ping pong with Chang'e as a way to get the picture for Fei Fei. As they play, they sing the song Hey Boy, 
and while Chang E is winning at first, Chen quickly catches up after calling Chang E selfish for not giving Ho Yi an immortality pill, causing her to be alone forever. This causes Chang E to lose her composure, but even though she loses, she refuses to let him leave. We then see her in a room, which has a picture of both her and Ho Yi together, and we learn that she truly misses him, and that the gift, along with the Jade Rabbit's potion, are the only things she needs to bring him back to life. Fei Fei has finally made it to a rocket and finds an exiled space servant named Gobi and the doll of Chang E her mother made for her, believing that to be the gift, which some space chickens quickly steal from her. After some crazy events, Fei Fei manages to get the doll back, but it's torn to pieces. She's devastated over this and sadly takes a bite of a mooncake she brought with her and ends up biting into something and takes out a half of a necklace. Suddenly realizing this must be the gift, she runs back to the palace. It seems to work since from some fog, Ho Yi appears and he and Chang'e embrace each other while singing a song in Chinese. Just as Chang'e is relieved he's back, Ho Yi starts to become transparent and tells her he cannot stay. Chang'e can't bear to lose him again but cannot hold on to him and he disappears. This causes her to give into a grief so strong it causes the great darkness to come again. Chang'e traps herself behind the barrier where she grieves alone for her dead husband. Fei Fei being the only one who can understand her pain is able to cross the barrier but as she starts walking to Chang'e she is faced with the memory of her mother, making her give into her own grief, causing Chang'e to float to her and give her advice, which Fei Fei then repeats back to Chang'e. This causes Chang'e to bring light back to Lunaria, and she slowly starts to heal from her broken heart, saying that the real gift all along was Fei Fei herself since she helped her when she needed it most. As they prepare to leave, Fei Fei, realizing Bungie is in love with the Jade Rabbit, allows her to stay with him, telling her she will be okay now. Chang'e has her lion dogs fly them back home, and the timescape is shown via pictures, showing Fei Fei's original family and then the wedding picture of her new family. The movie ends with both families celebrating the lunar year together and all getting along. I really enjoyed this movie, so much so that I already bought two books that are based on it. One is a 32 page illustrated book and the other is a novelization of the movie. On November 10th of this year, a book titled Over the Moon, Illuminating the Journey will be released and we will be able to discover the stunning artwork behind the film as well as what inspired the idea to make Chang'e more of a type of pop star than your typical goddess. I believe this movie uses the tale of Chang'e really well by using it as a way to teach people of all ages how to handle the loss of a loved one by not forgetting there are still other people around us and that life goes on.